Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Zed. Today, we're going to be talking about Canadian Solar, also known in the market as CSIK. Now, today we're going to be taking a look into due diligence parts, technical analysis, news, what I think about this one, analyst recommendations, and institutional buyers. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So Canadian Solar. So right off, we're going to go towards the About Us page to get a quick brief history about this one. So it starts off with saying Dr. Sean Q, the chairman, president, and the CEO founded Canadian Solar in 2001 in Canada with a bold mission to foster sustainable development and to create a better and cleaner earth for the future generations by bringing electricity powered by the sun to millions of people worldwide. Under Dr. Q's leadership, we have grown into one of the largest solar photovoltaic products and energy solutions provider, as well as one of the largest solar power plants developers globally. We have cumulatively delivered over 55 kilo, uh, gigawatts of solar modules into thousands of customers in more than 160 countries, enough to meet the clean uh, green energy needs to approximately 14 million households. We have more than 14,000 dedicated employees to strive each day to make this mission a reality. Customers choose us because we deliver the best possible products and value. Our modules and system solutions combine superior quality and market-leading structures, and our solar projects consistently achieve the highest production value and returns on investments. So Canadian Solar CSIQ currently has around 21 gig uh, gigawatts of solar projects and 17 GWH of storage projects and pipeline, and are uniquely positioned to provide project development and complete turnkey solar solutions. By bundling service for the entire project life cycle, feasibility study permitting developing engineering, procurement, construction, and maintenance, we can significantly introduce or reduce complexity and cost for industrial and commercial customers. In 2020, we raised around $260 million in capital for the planned company MSS Business to carve out an IPO and a completed $230 million convertible bond issuance. It will provide us with quick expanding our manufacturing capacity together with the most advanced technologies for supporting our targets from 18 gigawatts to 20 gigawatts of shipments in 2021. And right on towards their presentation here, you get to see some of their quarterly updates and some of their performances as well. So you're able to see in the first quarter of 2020, they had around $826 million. In the fourth quarter of 2020, you're looking at almost $1 billion. And in terms of the first quarter of 2021, you also have a $1 billion raise. So that's 5% quarter over quarter increase and 32% year over year. In terms of some of the operating income on here, you're able to see that in the first quarter, you're looking at $43 million. The last quarter was $2 million. A year ago was around $113 million. So there was a decrease around there. And the net income attributed to Canadian Solar Incorporations, again, was $23 million compared to $111 million year over year. Now, in terms of some of the highlights, the total module shipments grew 42% year over year in quarter one to 3.1 gigawatts the highest quarter one in record despite a difficult quarter due to the cost pressure shipments recognized as revenues were 2.7 gigawatts due to the timing of the shipments to be recognized as revenues in quarter two ASPs in quarter one increased near double digit quarter over quarter, which was offset by significant increase in input costs, higher raw material costs, higher shipping costs, and unfavorable FX. Global energy revenues and profits improved significantly in quarter one with approximately 500 megawatts of projects, sales in Japan, US, and India. And if you were to go a little bit further as well, you're able to see some of their divides uh, between where they're operating. I'll go to that in a second. But first off, the guidance to our guidance as of May 20th, 2021. So you're able to see that some of the guidance for 
quarter to 2021 includes a module shipments between 3.5 to 3.7 gigawatts, which is an increase from quarter one 2021. In terms of revenues, they're anticipating anywhere between 1.4 to 1.5 billion dollars, with a gross margin of 950 to 10.5 percent. So the quarter one margin driven by contribution of high margin projects, sales, and higher modules in ASPs. Quarter two significant shipments and revenue growth despite unfavorable supply side trends. Quarter two revenues includes significant contribution from battery storage. Now, focus on solar plus battery storage to strengthen our competitive advantage. They're looking into bringing in AI, big data, and machine learning tools in order to enhance the value of their storage assets. Now, you're also seeing as well that Canadian solar comes in into a total of around 16,878 in terms of their pipeline for um, and storage projects. Now, moving on towards something else. The China IPO progress. So on July 2020, all the way to around second quarter of 2021. So the last thing here you had was around submit applications to regulatory authorities. In quarter two 2021 was submitting application to stock exchange. In quarter two 2021 to 2022, you get basically the official listing. And some of you might think, well, hold on, we are already a stock in the U.S. market. Well, again, this is a China IPO progress. And you might think, well, why are they moving on towards China as well? It'll probably be dual listed as well. And what you get to see is that the revenue breakdown for the full year of 2020 had Asia at 47 percent. Europe's and other around 18% and America's around 35%. About, some people might think, well, you know, America's means just the United States of America, but some people forget that there's South America, North America, and America as a continent, really not just uh, a country. I'm just speaking as a Canadian here. <laughs> so anyway, I probably just lost half of my subscribers. Uh, so moving on, our mission is to power the world with solar energy and create a better and cleaner earth for future generations their origins they're founded in 2001 in ontario canada and listed on nasdaq as csiq in 2006 their performance is 30 percent cumulative growth in shipments since 2013 and expected 65 percent growth acceleration in 2021 and around 330 basis points average margin premium relative to the industry so we're going to move on from there. You can, you're can you able to see some of the reasons why they mentioned why to invest in Canadian solar. Global market leader with strong growth outlook driven by solar grid party or parity and accelerating demand for clean renewable energy. Multiple levers of growth in solar modules, system solutions, project development and ownership and battery storage. Market oriented strategy driving technologies and business model, innovation capturing new opportunities such as energy storage, strong, consistent operational and financial track record, and attractive valuation supported by strong fundamentals and balance sheet. So we can move on as well there, relating towards why they're moving on towards China, uh, Japan, some of the US and European Green Deal, and all of them going towards reduction of greenhouses and green, green uh, moving on towards a better green future. And the list goes on there. So this presentation is full of information, but I don't want to make it an hour video. So we're going to move on from there. Now, before moving on, if you'd like to see more contents like this, make sure to drop the subscribe button on the bottom right corner and turn on the bell notification button. Also, don't forget to drop a like to this video. And again, if you'd like to join our Discord, chat a bit more, have a bit more discussions, totally free in the description below. Now, some of the amazing things that they have. Let's take a look into the news. I'm going to read some of the news and then I'm going to go back and highlight into some. So Canadian Solar wins the first energy storage project in Colombia of 45 megawatts per hour, which is on the 12th of July. Canadian Solar secures 86 MWPs in Japan, which is the eighth solar auction solidifying its number one market share position in Japan. Canadian Solar subsidiary SCI Solar submits application documents for initial public offering on China's stars market. And the Canadian Solar secures 50 million euros from Santander to support growth in project developments in EMEA. 
Canadian Solar also announced that the results of 2021 meetings, shareholders, things that are usual, so I'm not going to really stress about that. Recurring energy amps up energy storage activity, executing on 2.3 gigawatts of storage projects. And they also did raise some shares, by the way, so that's something to consider. Canadian Solar signs one of the first private PPAs in the Italian markets with Expo Italia. And Canadian Solar invests in strategic partnership with AI Energy Storage, optimizing company Habitat Energy. So that is just in July and May, and the list goes on. So you get an idea on how they're moving and everything in between in that sense. So I don't think there is uh, really a point to going on with each of these news. Really, the title shows you everything you need to know about this one here. And if you would like to, again, to read a bit more, you can do so on your own free time going on towards news. I do highly recommend that you go ahead and read some of them. Uh, they're really interesting. Now, towards the fundamentals, take a look into the price over sales for this company. It's 0.68. And the SP500 price over sales is around 321, which shows you the general SP500 is multiple times more more than what it is right now. I would say almost around five times. So five times, well, you can get to see what the upside is. The price over book here is around 160. And take a look into the SP500 price over book. It's around 471. So it's around four times more than the actual SCIQ or three times more. So you got three and five. So this one at least got a double and still, or if it doubles, it would be still lower or cheaper than the SP500 averages. So that's something to really think about. In terms of their EPS of next year, you're looking at around 143% uh, growth, although the EPS this year was around 16% loss or lower. So that's something as well to consider. In terms of institutional buyers, it still remains very bullish in general with people or institutions adding at least not selling as well. So let's move on towards technical analysis. Now on the technical analysis perspective, we're starting to look at a few things that are very interesting. So the 10 SMA is above the 30 MA, which is very bullish. And the price point is above the 50 SMA. However, it is below the 200 SMA, making that the only bearish thing within the moving averages. In between the 10 SMA and the 30 MA, there is something called the trading action zone, where the price point is currently at. That's where you can start expecting the most reversals to occur. In terms of the 80X, it suggests that it can actually build up towards a trend above 20. You start taking a look into a trend forming. The willing percent R is closer towards the oversold section. And the willing percent R is very similar to the RSI, also known as the relative strength index. So meaning in an equilibrium situation, you might have more buyers coming in, which means in a supply and demand being limited, you would have the price point going higher. Now, in terms of the MACD, that attempts to be going on towards the negative side. And the negative sides means either accumulation or a negative reversal. Although it did attempt to, and it looks like it's having a bit of trouble maintaining the positive side, so you might have an accumulation in the next few days. Momentum is still very bullish and positive. In terms of stochastic fast and stochastic slow, it's kind of mixed. It's not telling you much. It's kind of in the middle line, telling you that it can either go both directions and, you know, it's basically an eight ball situation. Um, anyway, in terms of the moving average bands, which is really main of mainly volume and momentum, the top is expected around 45.49, the bottom 37.22, and the middle where it's currently also touching is around 41.36. Now, in terms of Fibonacci retracements, and again, one of the big reasons I use this one is, is because high frequency traders use it. On the support part, 3882, below there, 3209 and 2376. Resistances, 4555, 5514, and at 6739. And in terms of taking a look at the analyst recommendations, what you're able to see right off the bat is that there is some coverage. The last one was 13 days ago with a price target of around $47 from Goldman Sachs with a pulled position. This person's success rate is 53% and average return of 18%. 17, 17 days ago, you had $51 price target from Oppenheimer Brown to buy with a success rate of around 65% and an average return of around 65%. 
That's really good. Another price target around last month was $58 with a buy, buy position and this person's success rate is around 50% and an average return of around 15%. Another one last month, $42 with a hold position from UBS. This person's success rate is 62% and an average return of 24% comes to the question to Ed, what do you think about this one? After taking a look into their fundamentals, it definitely does look really interesting on the stock price and everything in between. I do think this is probably a really good long-term investment rather than just trading. Now, in terms of the trading part, things are looking a little bit rough because it probably would start taking a look at the support levels very closer to the 45 46 and 3766 those will be the real test below there 3467 or 34 uh yeah 67 and if it does drop within there things might turn a little bit ugly and i do expect for at least testing one or more of these in the next few days but in terms of a long-term investment i think this one is a good one there at least from what i'm actually seeing and what i'm reading so i don't have a position yet in this one but i'm actually considering one and that's a good thing what do you think about the sticker make sure to mention down in the comments below share subscribe and like and have a wonderful day now if you're still here on this video make sure to drop down below and join our discord we have a lot of different things going on including for instance members that gives picks for free it's not pump and dumps we just things we think about swings etc we also have really exciting bots uh, you can actually use those ones for instance we're just testing out this bot for instance that gives you fibonacci resistance points activities etc and we have a bunch of free things totally free we run on tips here and you can ask me questions suggest stocks etc it's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one feel to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day